As we talk more about the NBA Finals, game number six is tomorrow night. The Raptors play-by-play -play man is Paul Jones, and he joins us now on the MSG 150 Speed Dial, presented by Fios by Verizon. Paul is on the West Coast, and unlike last week, there are no trucks in the background, which might bode well for your safety this time around. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm close to a garbage dump now, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking one for all three of y'all right now. Well, the good they, news... Be, Y'all be treating me like Guillermo on the on the late night show, but I'm here, man. <laughs> the good news is we can see you, but we don't have to smell whatever's happening around you in the garbage. But let's start with what happened at the end of Game 5 and a lot of the talk about those last three minutes. And I think it begins with the criticism of the timeout by Nick Nurse. He explained it as he saw some fatigue from his team and thought it would be a good time to kind of reset them. What did you see in that moment? Well, I mean, it, look, it's, it's, it's tough to argue philosophy, Alan. It's something that he's done. And I know that Dwayne Casey did as well. Um, you know, that timeout when they changed the rules a few years ago, it was a subtle change. But ask the guy beside you who's been on the court, that extra timeout, and John will tell you, that extra timeout is huge for coaches. But everybody didn't like the way it had the game drag on. And people were like, oh, the game's taking forever. Like, no, wait a minute. They're trying to win, and there's strategy involved. So that subtle little change forced the coaches to do things like Dwayne Casey and now Nick Nurse is doing now. It's philosophical. Personally, and, and you, I, I'll probably defer to John more on this, when a player is rolling, you just want to keep it going. Yes, absolutely. We, we, we talk about whether it's the puck in hockey, the ball in soccer, the ball in basketball. When you are... When you have the implement in basketball, when you have your hands on the leather, you're never hurt or you're never tired. It has, it has that kind of healing powers. Absolutely. My own philosophy is I'd let it keep going. And Michael Jordan has always said, in a case like that, they're tired. Make them call the timeout. Right. I'm rolling right, right now. I'm getting to the basket and I'm going to get two more. Or if I get fouled, what do you know? I get to the line. I take my time. I can get a mini rest there as I make my free throws and we're all good. But it's philosophical, fellas, as I said, and I don't have any problem with Nick Nurse doing it. And I think the only reason why it's become a big focus right now is because Toronto couldn't make a play going down the stretch and needed one more bucket. Paul, a lot's been made about what's, what was uh, the way the crowd reacted when Kevin Durant got hurt. Now, yeah. I've been yeah. up there. I know that can Canadians are like the nicest people in the world. You've been up there for a long time. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think it was a, a malicious act in the way they were cheering. I think they were cheering more so because now they have a real legitimate shot at winning the title for the first time. Can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah, John, I, I thought that was a big part of it. I also thought there was another part. You have to look at where we are. We're in the finals, and there are a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon now that don't really understand it. They're, they're, they're casual fans. They want to see the team win, and that might have been – an initial reaction before the rest of the people that know what's going on say, hey, 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 you can't behave like that. I mean, it's like when I take my son to play golf, I'm very aware of the etiquette, but he's 14 years old. And I, I got to tell him, don't talk in a guy's backswing. Don't stand with your shadow between the line of where this guy is putting in the, in the hole. So I, I think there's a, a freshness and a newness and, and, maybe an ignorance and an uneducated side to some of those fans that didn't understand. And I agree with you, John. It might have been just as simple as, hey, man, we got a chance to win now. And look, it changed. And I thought they recovered well with the KD chant. And you could see Kyle Lowry and, and Serge Ibaka saying, no, 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 stop it. Don't, don't cheer a guy being hurt. And I think they rescued themselves at the end. But um, it's unfortunate that people just want to focus on that part. And as I said, John, I think it's a, a, an ignorance with some of the neophyte fans, and to your point as well, just the fact that they're saying, hey, we got a chance to win now. Now, Paul, the other night you got a whole country bracing for a championship. Yeah. The Raptors come up just a touch short. How difficult now to fly across the country here, all the way to the West Coast, and be ready to go here and not have to now face a Game 7 with a loss? You follow this team. You know it very well. What are the challenges to bounce back? I, I, look, it's a huge challenge, and, and last, that game took me back to game six. Uh, I covered the finals in Miami with San Antonio when uh, San Antonio was in a position at the free throw line, mm -hmm. and the NBA stats later revealed the teams that were in that position 
were a 97% chance to win. They were something like a 1,800 and something wins and 20 losses. It just didn't happen that often. And then, I mean, we saw where they had the rope around the yeah. court and Ray Allen hit the three, sent it to overtime. San Antonio didn't recover in game seven. That's the kind of feeling I have with what's going on in Toronto here. They need to bounce back quickly. The one difference from that series and this series, the Raptors have a Kawhi Leonard. And fellas, when I, Bill, when I watched him walk off the floor after game four here in Oakland, where they went up three to one, he strode off the court with his head down. And you can't tell by looking at him if that guy had just won a $100 million Powerball or he had robbed Fort Knox. The expression <laughs> was the thing. And I think that's what's going to carry this team through. They realized, I mean, look at him. He was scuffling the whole game and then scored 10 straight points. I, I just think his demeanor, his collective, we got this to the team, is going to carry them through. And look, this is, this is another chance for them to win the game. There's no Kevin Durant this time. And I just think they've been, been the better team for the majority of the series. And one of the connections with that game that we're talking about, that game six, Ray Allen hits the shot, is that Kawhi played in that game and had a chance to right. win and saw – what happened after that, which was they could not maintain the momentum because of that shot and win the next game. So do you, you have to figure that Kawhi has that in the back of his mind. But do you think Paulie also has in the back of his mind that last possession, even though the right play when the double's coming is to make the pass? I know we criticize LeBron about this stuff all the time, but is there a part of you that thinks, I've got a championship on the line, I need my best player taking that shot? Well, and that's where people were critical, Alan, of Nick Nurse not taking a timeout that he had left. And, I mean, I, look, we know that coaches like to go a lot of times without the timeout. They brought the ball full court uh, so as not to be congested in, in the half court. And, uh, look, I give Golden State credit. You can all actually hear Draymond Green yelling to Iguodala, go. Yep. And then watch for Iguodala. We're looking at the screen here. He comes running up and then um, and Draymond, Draymond makes a great play there. The high side. Right. He gets – high side of Marc Gasol, so he's able to go out and challenge the shot. you got to give Golden Straight State a championship team. You've got to give them some credit for playing proper defense. Kawhi made the play. They double-teamed him, took it out of his hands. A lot of people were saying that's a time that maybe you could have called a timeout exactly. and reset, try to get the ball back to your best player. I mean, I've talked to many coaches around the league who are saying they thought Fred was going to drive it with the left-hand finish to try and win, even though – it was a bigger player, Sean Livingston, guarding mm -hmm. him. And Fred has those funky finishes over taller players. But he drives, and he makes the right play, kicking it to Kyle Lowry. So um, there was a, a, a the good defense just kind of beat the offense on that play. I, you know what, Alan? I'm not so sure that forcing it would have, especially the way the whistle was going at the end, forcing it would have yielded a call. I thought Kawhi Leonard made the right play. No, it's the right play, but I think what you said earlier is just get the timeout. Get the timeout right there. It's not, I need it in his hands, and i got to create a play. Gasol should have come up, set a screen. There's a million ways that we could break that play down, but we'll see if they get a, another chance at it. But you know what? We're sitting here, and we're watching, and we're talking to you, and, and we can't help but notice that there's a couple of kegs behind you. And I was just <laughs> hoping that you – nobody's know, looking right now, Paul. A couple of them. You left can, shoulder, Paul. Left put, shoulder, yep. Put, put them into the rental car. And when you come back to New York, I, I got that, I got really bad news for you guys. And John Wallace should have told you this. Are they empty? This time, in Toronto, I am a non-drinker. There's only one alcoholic beverage I partake of: champagne. Oh, your weddings, winning. celebrations, <laughs> championships. NBA. That's when I had my. That's right, Paul. That's when I had my first drink. We won the conference cha championship for the right to go to the Canadian championship when I was a freshman in college. My roommate was a, a senior, and I was shaking the champagne bottle. He said, he said, youngster, you're supposed to drink that. I said, I don't drink. He said, try it. Try it. I've been hooked ever since. So I hold up for champagne. Are you going to be popping a bottle? The Raptors going to win this yeah. or what, Paul? Isaiah Thomas, who owns you know, one of the biggest champagne yes. companies in the world, has donated some champagne to the Raptors. And Zeke's stuff is good. I've tasted it. Yeah. It is real good. Okay. It's, it's, it, and ask him about it. He'll tell you. His champagne is made from the first squash of the grapes, not the third or the fourth where they put all that sugar in. 
So I'm good with that stuff. And if it's floating around tomorrow, oh, I'm getting me some of that. <laughs> All right, Paul. I love it. All right. Well, as always, we appreciate it. Uh, again, you have more hair on your head this week than John does. Uh, I mean, what? <laughs> how I dare need, you? I need new material. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Paul. Uh, and, uh, My pleasure, guys. Enjoy game six. All right. For more great videos from the MSG 150, check out our right there. And remember, our show is on Monday through Thursday, 8 to 10.30 p.m. on MSG Network and MSG Go.